You know what it is. This your boy Tony Royal. I'm back with another video reaction today. I will react to Vlad the Impaler. How to trap your enemies. You feel what I'm saying? This guy look like he's nothing to play with. He'll kill you in an instant and he don't take nothing for nobody. But he probably that type of person. If you trade against him, he'll just get you like that but before i click to this video make sure you guys like share subscribe and don't forget to click that notification bell to not miss an upload that i post and this actual video will be in the link in the description down below and my social media site will be in the description down below don't forget to subscribe you guys and i thank you guys for being a part of the real world family and we all watch this together and without further ado, let's get to this video, bro. Vlad the Impaler, the man known as the son of the devil by his son enemies the and the son of the dragon to his allies. Mm. A man whose legend throughout history went on to actually spawn the whole fictional genre of vampires and Dracula. You know, Vlad actually gets a bit of bad rap, mostly because he loved shoving people on a spike. But a lot of that is actually more psychological warfare that he would do, or enemies of him trying to badmouth him to the Pope to undermine him. Vlad might actually be one of the most misunderstood characters might in history. Be. But yeah. we'll save that for another video for another day. Right now, I'm going to tell you how Vlad dealt with his enemies in a way that you can use in your life. It was that evil he hanging people like that from a stick, bro. Wow. No, not, not that way. Okay, so oh, Vlad okay. was returning back to his homeland of what is now Romania <laughs> yeah, but... after spending most of his life in Turkey being basically brainwashed into the ways of the Ottoman Empire. Him and his brother being princes were taken as prisoners to Turkey and it was customary to try to brainwash the sons of conquered areas to get them on side. Vlad's younger brother bought this brainwashing hook, line, and sinker, but Vlad himself did not. He pretended to so that he could be sent back to Romania to replace his father when his father hmm. died. Living amongst the Turks for such a long period of time, he knew them from the inside out. He knew how they thought. He also knew that a tiny little country like his could not stand against the might of an entire empire. So he already had as his plan a scorched earth policy. He knew that once Turkey figured out he was not actually on their side and he was there to declare independence, they would come and invade. When they would, his plan would be scorched earth, burn everything, burn every crop, Jesus. poison every well, salt the earth, so that there's nothing there for the Ottoman Empire to get. They couldn't scavenge anything, they couldn't eat anything, they would run out of supplies and then have to go home. He did this and it worked. But to prepare for this strategy, he knew that every single patch of ground in Romania that could produce food would need to be producing food, because he wouldn't know which areas he would have to scorch, so he'd need to have food growing elsewhere. So what he did was he sent out word amongst Romania to all the, the beggars, all the homeless people, all the people living in poverty, that if any of them want land, come to him and he will give them land that they can own out of his own personal inheritance of land, being the prince now becoming king, That's and they could work that land. land. So he sent this word out all good. across Romania, but only one guy in the entire land of Romania actually showed up to ask for a bit of land. It was an ex-soldier who had a, a hole in his head from an arrow that hit him during a battle and he'd have seizures all the time. So Vlad gave him some land, but he was very upset that none of the beggars or anyone else showed up. So he decided he'd make another offer. He put the word out to all the beggars, all the homeless people, that if they came to his castle, he'd give them a giant free meal. This time, every beggar in the entire yeah, land showed just up, and when they did, they closed the doors and eat. slaughtered each and every one of them, as wow. Vlad tended to do. That was just the way that Vlad did things. But one of his associates asked him why That's he did do, this, Vlad? and he explained that if these beggars and these poor people, if they don't want to work, but they're still willing to take a handout, then when the Turks arrive, all the Turks need to do is just give them some gold, and they'll tell the Turks anything they want to know about Vlad, about his armies, about uh, the movements, about what battle plans they might be making. So he simply couldn't afford to have all those beggars in his land because he knew they'd eventually betray him. And you have to admit, that's pretty smart thinking on the part of Vlad. A lot of other rulers would have just forgotten about the beggars, but he could see where that would lead in the long run. He realized that. that the way Shoot, people act in nothing. little things is also how they will act in much bigger, much more important things. So in this way, we can kind of set up Vlad the Impaler type tests to test how people react on small things to know whether we can trust them or not. 
This is something I've actually done over the course of my life. Sometimes if I'm sort of meeting a new group of people and kind of becoming friends with someone, I'll actually throw out a bit of a test. I'll maybe tell them a secret, tell them maybe an embarrassing story, and then I'll say to them, yeah, just keep that quiet, you know, just between us. Now what I'm telling them actually isn't a secret, it's not really something that I actually care about if anyone knows, so it's not really all that important, but I make them think it's important that they keep it secret. That way, if later on down the track, I hear that story through the grapevine, I know I cannot trust that person. I know I can never I tell them trust you or read me the It's a very all good you. way of flushing out who to trust and who not to trust. And also yeah. when you catch someone in this, you can actually make a joke out of it in front of everyone and go, well, it's a good thing it wasn't that big of a secret. Mm. This way it puts everyone else on notice that that yeah. person is not very trustworthy. And also it puts everyone else on notice that they should not betray your trust. They should not give up a secret. Because if they do give up a secret that you tell them, it could be another one of these tests. Oh. But Vlad the Impaler did lots of interesting things like this throughout the course of his life. There were many different layers and lots of different psychological warfare that he used against the Turks. And I... Man, that was a <laughs> crazy video though, because he was just testing these people out to see. Like, it's just like in a way, okay, which one is my friends and which one are my fake ones that supposedly be my friends. But he just tests those guys just like, okay, if you're a traitor, I'm going to kill you. You feel what I'm saying? And that's just it. But uh, if you that type of person that I'm going to feed you and such and such and a third, nah, you're not going to hang around with me and try to pretend to be my best friend. But... I really enjoyed this video, you guys. If y'all really like this video, make sure y'all give this video a big thumbs up. And subscribe if you're new. Please subscribe because you already know this channel is always lit, you guys. I never let you guys down, even though it's been a couple of days, you know. But I'm back in action. But subscribe if you're new. And I'm out, bruh. Peace.